Hey, this is Graham Reynolds. We're going to listen to Grimm, the ballet score album that we're releasing based on the Grimm Tales ballet we do with Ballet Austin and Stephen Mills. Now, this was performed two years ago, maybe, and we're just releasing the full album now. But so much is happening that we wanted to acknowledge the moment. So all proceeds from album sales for the first two months will go directly to Black Lives Matter. The place you can buy it where the highest percentage will come to us that will pass on to Black Lives Matter is Bandcamp. Look for the album Grimm by Graham Reynolds on Bandcamp.com. And thank you so much for the support. And we stand with Black Lives Matter and with the protesters. Thank you. Talk a little bit about just my history at the Long Center and the very opening weekend. So there's the big room, Dell, and then the smaller room, the Rollins. And the opening night, uh, I, I wrote a piece for Brandon Temple, Chris Marsh, and myself, along with the Austin Symphony that we played, um, whatever that Friday night that was the opening. While downstairs, I scored uh, a Rude Mex show that was opening the Rollins Theater. So from the very first night, I've been performing in the Long Center, and I've been a great supporter of arts in Austin. So many of us grew up reading Grimm's tales or seeing them depicted in films or otherwise. It's a part of so much of literature and art and entertainment that they've uh, they've fed us, uh, really. But what well, at least what I didn't know was that these different translations in different generations have sort of sanitized or washed down or modernized or however you want to look at it, but changed the original stories. And uh, visual artist Natalie Frank really dug into the originals and uh, then made these paintings where it's much more violent. It's it doesn't line up with uh, what we would, it's the opposite of Barney the Dinosaur. It's, it's, it's gritty and there's a lot of sexual element, uh, elements in there. And that's what she captured in her paintings and that's what Stephen Mills was interested in being inspired by when we made a ballet. With Natalie and Stephen and the whole team at Ballet Austin, three stories were chosen. Uh, two relatively unknown, Frog King and Juniper Tree, and then one relatively known, Snow White. And we made three 25 minute or so ballets for one whole night called Grim Tales. So the first of the stories we're gonna listen to is Frog King. And it's got some of the typical things you associate with fairy tales in Grimm, uh, a creature that turns into a handsome prince, it's got princesses, it's got kings, all that kind of thing. The, the creepy element is turned way up, not just like creepy, scary violence. She throws him against the wall and he splatters into pieces. The, the princess is in love with a golden ball and is willing to trade the rescue of that golden ball for favors. Like turn the, the, the nasty parts of Grimm turned turned way up. So for the score, what we did was for, for the live performance, we had 20 or 25 players, something like that. And we had you know, oboe and bassoon, a big string section, big percussion section, and then four different keyboardists playing all the layers and layers of sampled, synthesized uh, piano and various other keyboard parts and triggering drum loops and things like that. Listening back to it, I try, I, uh, you know, I tried to make a hybrid where, where extremely programmed computer sounds and approaches to creating music uh, merged with pencil and paper acoustic music in this way where they felt like they were home together. And sometimes I can't really tell listening back what, what was done in the computer and what was done by a live musician. For example, we take the, the drum kit and then we put it through um, the, this hardware software combination called sensory percussion, which takes the drum sounds um, the, and triggers other sounds. So Jeremy is playing the drums, but we're hearing a combination of the acoustic drums that we recorded with these other sounds. And so they have the, the human touch and feel of Jeremy's playing, but 
a whole other palette of sounds that you could never get out of an acoustic kit. Um, we open up with Alexis playing the violin, and it's very clearly the violin, but then as we go, things become blurrier. Uh, there's a lot of delay, there's a lot of distortion, a lot of these classic guitar effects, but turn on to other instruments. There's a contrabassoon that I always uh, love using when I get an opportunity. Of the three, this is probably the least dark, um, and it's got a playfulness to it, although all, all three of these pieces really have some dark elements. Anyway, let's start listening to Frog King. And uh, importantly, I will be super active in the chat. So if you have questions about how something was made or comments or any feedback, as we listen, we can chat together in the chat box below where you're listening. So, or to the side or however you have it set up on your computer. So join me there in the chat box and let's get to listening.
Okay, so I hope you liked Frog King. Now we're going to switch over to Juniper Tree, which I had never heard of, and I think many of you had never heard of, at least before Ballet Austin did it. And that may be because it is so dark and violent that I think it's very hard to sanitize for a contemporary audience. And uh, Stephen didn't really try to, although some of the violence, even though it's on stage, is abstracted just enough that some of the young people in the audience were able to watch it and not realize quite what was happening. But, you know, there's a, a mo mother who dies, and there's a, an evil stepmother who comes, there's a decapitation of a boy, the, the daughter comes back to try and talk to the boy and knocks the boy's head back off that it had been reattached, then the, the, the baked into the pie when the father comes home. It's just it's super over the top. Stephen, with his choreography, was able to get sort of a, a nuanced feel to it where it, it, I don't know it didn't feel normal so much as uh, uh, you were able to immerse in it in a way that something that that extremely violent could be challenging to unless you were just uh, glorifying the violence. The music doesn't betray quite how dark it is. There's dark elements some big distortions and some aggressive stuff but it's not horrible screeching sounds when uh, the, the deaths happen or not super sad music most of the time when when something sad happens it's dark uh, but playful and tries to maintain a balance so in, in a way i think you could listen to snow white and frog king and this one and not know which is the heaviest in terms of these things. Let's take a listen to this. Just imagine all that crazy stuff happening. And again, if you have questions or comments, uh, join me in the chat box and we'll talk about what's going on in the music or what's going on in the ballet as far as the story. Okay, let's get to listening again.
Okay, well, thank you so much for listening. Thank you to the Long Center for hosting. Thank you to Ballet Austin and Stephen and Cookie and Bill and the whole team over there who made the ballet and made me making the score possible. And thank you for all the comments and questions. And if you have any more, I'll stay for a few minutes more to uh, wrap up any of those, uh, uh, those threads. And remember that the album proceeds for, for the next two months uh, will be going to Black Lives Matter. So uh, we're trying to support and acknowledge in any way we can. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.